just like randomly talk what what we have to say. Okay. <laughs> Is it okay to say which school are you going? No. No, okay. I'm just just my school. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can say. No. But you're from California. I'm from California, Northern California. That's why you're going to UC Davis? UC I heard Davis. she's going to UC Davis <laughs> for med school. I heard like before mm -hmm. someone's applied for the residency. Mm -hmm. She said they have some benefits when you apply for med school or residency if you're from oh, like from California area. or some connected yeah. like relationship in California. Are you agree? Do you think? Um, for med school, definitely, mm -hmm. because they want to, a lot of med schools, especially state schools, they mm -hmm. care if you are connected to the area because then you're more likely to stay there. But for MD, so I'm going to MD-PhD. Mm -hmm. So for MD-PhD, they don't really care as much because it's funded mm -hmm. and they expect you to do more research and less patient care. But I think it still helps. So UC Davis, for example, mm -hmm. they had a prompt in their application that asked me what is your connection to northern or central california oh. so i had to write about it so okay. they did ask me that yeah is and my parents live there and i grew up there so i think like that is helpful did you do the interview as well yeah so during the interview you also have to like talk about i'm from here like a little bit the interview was more focused on uh my MD PhD interview is more focused on my research oh, and see. my research interests going forward. But my MD interview, mm -hmm. Davis does a weird style of interviews where they're like situational questions and you have to oh. talk about what you would do in that situation. It's a separate in between. Yeah, they were separate. Yeah. That oh. was in the morning and then the research ones are in the afternoon. Look, every school has the MD PhD also same style of the interview. No. No, every school. Every school is different. Yeah. Okay. Most schools will just have those conversational interviews, mm -hmm. but Davis does both the conversational research interviews and the okay. situational judgment kind of interviews. Do you know the like, like UC Davis has accepted the international like student? So that's a good question. Um, to my knowledge, uh -huh. for the MD program, mm -hmm. I actually am not sure, mm -hmm. but. To my knowledge, for the MD PhD program, those are a lot smaller. So my cohort is only six people. Uh -huh. Usually, it's like three, oh. three to five people. So I'm not sure if they ever accept international students, but I do know that international students have a hard time getting into MD PhD programs that are funded by the NIH because it's government funded. Oh, I see. However, the UC Davis MD PhD program is funded internally. Oh. So they may. I'm not an international student, so I'm not like exactly fully sure. Like, everyone's, like, who got the, like, who got, like, accepted to do the MD-PhD program get the, yeah. like, funding? Yeah, from Davis. Oh. Yeah, so, except for one student who is going through this other route of, like... But these are also, yeah. is every school has different... Every school has a different way, yeah. <laughs> but if it's NIH funding, I think that they can accept international oh. students. But since it's internal, UC Davis might actually allow international students to be accepted. Because I heard uh, from Brittany, mm -hmm. might be his MD student, MD school, really hard to get in with yeah. the international. But MD PhD, some school has more chance to get in there. Mm. So Yeah, it's like, for MD PhD, it's more of a question about funding. Mm -hmm. But for MD, I don't know why. I think it's like more of like, number of spots mm -hmm. and because there's so many applicants across the country but it doesn't really make sense to me like I'm not, I don't right, really understand right. the system why they can't accept more international students because it's hard for international students at every level if you're applying to residency you have to take all the board exams before residency whereas in the U.S. you take step three during the after the first year of residency so they just make it harder at every step of the process for anyone who's trained internationally for any point, whether it's undergrad or med school or beyond that. Like you mean so everything is get harder for international students? Yeah, the, the earlier you could come into the medical education mm -hmm. in the U.S., mm -hmm. the easier it will be going forward to stay in the U.S. Mm -hmm. as a practicing physician. Yeah. But I also would say that like, I mean, several international students do like a PhD, maybe 
if you already have medical training, then that would be easier. I don't know. I, I know it's like in especially for the like near they only need one or two med school can accept like mm -hmm. international. Yeah. So I heard the ones if you miss someone but the graduate the that med school but he or she is international, mm -hmm. they're smart. Mm -hmm. But they're not <laughs> kind of not a high score they can get. Interesting. Yeah, I I think at that point it's like there's just not enough space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that right. they make for these students, which is like shouldn't really be the case, but they don't make enough space for international students to like mm -hmm. hold seats in programs. So I think if you're an international student and you're applying to medical school in the U.S., it would probably make sense to have green, either at a least backup, a green card. Yeah, yeah, a green card, or also you could apply to other programs. I know like. I have some international friends who now end up going to med school in mm -hmm. um, Australia for some reason. Oh. And maybe their system is a bit, not easier, but like maybe it's more conducive for mm -hmm. like the international application process. I don't know. Um, but okay. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Like the, the US is, oh. <laughs> is good for yeah. education, yeah. but so many other places yeah. are too that it's kind of like. So med school. Like for like med school application, do you think which is the most important? Like your score in from school, mm. or like like which class you have to get, like in in university. Yeah, and also like research experience, and also have like what was the name of the like math? Oh, MCAT. I can yeah. Yeah. So I think that every component is important. Mm -hmm and they're important at different stages. Mm -hmm. So full transparency with my application, mm -hmm. the weakest point on my application was my scores mm -hmm. from undergrad. Mm -hmm. Like my uh, GPA mm -hmm. was weaker than most applicants. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, could have had a, a, a big effect on mm -hmm. like how many programs I got an interview. I think once you get an interview, then you get to really like show them who you are, what you care about, all of that stuff and then from that point they're more holistic typically mm -hmm. but in terms of how to get an interview mm -hmm. it's usually heavily reliant on scores whether it's your gpa oh. or your mcat in terms of what classes you take in undergrad there's requirements so oh, everyone has at least taken those requirements typically i mean if you didn't take the requirements mm -hmm. then you can't expect to get in because they're they have so many applicants that they're not gonna like accept someone oh. who didn't finish their. But I heard like the maybe he is like dental school. Mm -hmm. He applied to dental school. They said, oh, the reason why I accepted there is my the major from mm. like college is kind of like unique. He has oh. one is kind of science or economic. The other is kind of art. Art, yeah. yeah or health, like we public health. Yeah. So it's more kind of literature class he took, but he still got the like require the class yeah so that's the mm -hmm. thing and it's become so much more popular mm -hmm. now to not just major in like a science mm -hmm. maybe you could major mm -hmm. in a science and then have another major or another minor or some people entirely major in something else mm -hmm. that's non-science related but they're still pre-med as in they still take all the pre-med requirements and usually when you go to an institution and you say i want to be pre-med mm -hmm. then they work those classes into your schedule regardless of what your major is so you could choose to study like violin but oh. if you say, I want to be pre-med as well, then they should fit that into your schedule for some of your general ed requirements. They'll put in the correct biology classes, chemistry classes, so physics pre classes. pre-med is in Korea, there is no pre-med mm. class. Yeah. But pre-med is also like different like course of the like student as a student mm -hmm. here. So you have to apply first? You don't have to apply. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends. The school that I went to for undergrad mm -hmm you don't have to apply to be pre-med you can just once you apply to the school and you uh -huh. get in mm -hmm. you can just choose to be pre-med pre it's uh. just a matter of which courses you choose to take so some schools though if those classes are uh, overloaded like mm -hmm. there's so many mm -hmm. people who want to take it mm -hmm. then maybe that's more competitive to get the mm -hmm. right courses mm -hmm. but typically speaking like anyone can decide i want to take you know calculus and mm -hmm. i want to take general chemistry and then that should be fine Oh, so you're gonna be US. like pre med here, like? Yeah, if you're coming from another country, 
-hmm. I don't know how the requirements work, but I know that you certainly have to, they, they do this like equivalency thing uh -huh. where they try to see like mm -hmm. how your curriculum mm -hmm. is equivalent to the curriculum in the States and there's a f some competencies mm -hmm. that they try to ensure. But pre-med courses for like, like, uh, like the word, you, the old classes prepare for the math school. Yeah, theoretically, <laughs> theoretically but yeah. Yeah, I it's mean, that's the point. So you do like calculus, um, physics, uh -huh. like general physics, general chemistry, um, organic chemistry, uh, biology, like general biology. A lot of people take biochemistry. Um, a lot of people take some sort of sociology course. Mm -hmm. uh, some people take psychology. And um, the, those like, are kind of peripheral courses. The, but like your research like experience is it necessary uh, or like ev everyone's trying to do that that's a good question it's not necessary as mm -hmm. in you don't absolutely have to have it mm -hmm. to go to medical school mm -hmm. if you just want to do medical school for md phd mm -hmm. you absolutely have to have research mm -hmm. however i think things have gotten so competitive mm -hmm. in the in like the u.s medical uh -huh. school application yeah. system that like so many people have research okay so that it becomes like <laughs> you should try it mm -hmm. i mean i think like it's so fair if research is not mm -hmm. for you but you should give it a shot at some point try right. to get an opportunity even if it's just like you know for a month volunteering mm -hmm. in a lab mm -hmm. if you don't like it then that's another thing but you certainly should find something that you're really passionate about so whether it's research whether it's about volunteering or teaching or these kinds of things if you can you know be really engaged. I think that makes a big difference. Okay. What about the finance things? You gotta like tuition through the like funding, right? Yeah. Yeah. But MD school, like math school. Yeah, you don't get funding. Yeah, but the, some school get the like fully tuition, like yeah. all the time. Albert uh, Einstein uh, has. Uh, they're so competitive, has. right? Yeah, <laughs> they're so because competitive. It's become to the point where like. I remember that when NYU mm -hmm. became free, mm -hmm. like I heard, <laughs> yeah, it just got so much more competitive mm -hmm. to go there, and like it's a great program, but it also becomes harder. So you have you certainly can't only apply to these free programs mm -hmm. because there's only a few of them still. Yeah, right. Hopefully, that's like the direction things oh. go. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, if you're not a, if you're not getting into one of those programs, mm -hmm. and typically programs like at private schools are very expensive. If you are from a state in mm -hmm. the U.S. and you go to a state school, usually they have like some tuition mm -hmm. decrease, like you know, incentive for you to to stay in state. However, I think regardless, medical school costs so much money. Like, like comparing like, to just like university. Oh yeah. That's college. The thing about college, and I mean, college is very expensive in uh -huh. the U.S., especially like private school. So if you are an international student going to private school. Like I went to a private school, I went to Boston uh -huh. University. Then, and you're paying out of pocket, mm -hmm. that's gonna be really expensive. And med school's not gonna be similar. that different. It's somewhat okay. similar. However, for me, like as a American citizen, I have the benefit of also applying for federal scholarship, federal grants, mm -hmm. scholarships within the mm -hmm. university. So for me, I got a lot more financial aid for undergrad. Mm -hmm. And many people, have access to like student loans that like, many Americans mm -hmm. have access to student loans um, who could then like subsidize that could mm -hmm. then subsidize the cost so then medical school there's like far fewer student loans or scholarships mm -hmm. available so then most people end up taking out completely loans for the whole thing and it like can be like a quarter million dollars for four years oh I heard that but you know, like most Ivy League, the yeah. like school is like uh, private school. Mm -hmm. So do you think like main school graduated, and or just the school, the math school? Some people doesn't know really well. Is it like which one is like? Does it make a difference? Oh, is it make a difference? Do you think? I mean, yeah, it certainly makes a difference. Like, if you're going to a school with a big name, because. Like it's it's mostly a big difference in terms of like, like networking, but mm -hmm. what about the like education? I don't think the education differs that heavily. Like some schools are 
trying, I mean, schools in general are always trying to change up their medical education practices and like how they structure the courses and how like in incorporating student feedback and everything. But more about the networking after graduation. But yeah, I think that, I mean, that's, I am not in medical mm -hmm. school yet, so mm -hmm. I don't know, but my impression is that name takes you far, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to like applying for residency. Mm -hmm. Because not only do you have this big name, like mm -hmm. say like Harvard or, or Columbia mm -hmm. on your resume, but you've also met people at Harvard and Columbia who tend to be leaders in the field, mm -hmm. who tend to know people all over the country. Mm -hmm. So if you say, it's been great being here at Harvard, but I want to move to San Diego, California, chances of like someone from Harvard knowing someone in San Diego like are pretty high compared to, you know, maybe if you go to a, a smaller school maybe their network is not like so expansive. However, that's so subjective because there's mm -hmm. faculty members at every institution that are not really into networking, yeah. like do the bare minimum versus some who like love to get out mm -hmm. and go to conferences and meet people yeah, right. and blah, blah, blah. So it depends. I think it depends what you want after graduate. So you just yeah. want to add uh, like surgeon, as well, just like doctor. Yeah, like you you can do uh, that yeah. regardless mm -hmm. of where you go. Um, so but all of these things, like if you want to be the best in the field in orthopedics, then okay, yeah. you really you have, have to. to chase the networks mm -hmm. so that you can, you know, get to that point where now you know people and they can put you in positions where you can right, be getting right. more opportunities. So, what is your like like the goal in in med school and after med school? Um, you you're just thinking for now. Like, can't yeah, change it every time. Sure, but. sure. Yeah, no, it can change for sure. Um, and I'm open to that. I mm -hmm. think my goal is to, well, my immediate goal mm -hmm. is to like start med school mm -hmm. strong. I, as I said, like my mm -hmm. undergraduate, mm -hmm. I had like a lot of challenges mm -hmm. academically in my undergraduate. Mm -hmm. And so like, I really want to invest more in um, like making sure that I can take in as much of the material mm -hmm. as possible and make myself open mm -hmm. to opportunities. But um, like I said, I'm going to be doing MD-PhD, mm -hmm. I'm really interested in research, so mm -hmm. hopefully when I transition to graduate school, then I can find a lab that has a nice balance of, right now I'm thinking mm -hmm. like musculoskeletal health mm -hmm. and bioengineering. Um, I'd like to do my PhD in biomedical engineering, um, so that's one goal. And then afterwards, for now, I really want to leave the door open, or I, I really want to keep the door open for... Um, going into a surgical residency, maybe mm -hmm. orthopedic surgery. Okay, but you're not. I don't want to be a, like in the Scott Academy. No, I I definitely want to see patients. Okay. Yeah, okay. at least that's like how I'm feeling now. I definitely want to practice. In fact, my big motivation for even being interested in medicine mm -hmm. is wanting to go into sports medicine. I see. And like working with mm -hmm, teams mm -hmm. and working with professional athletes. Yeah. I think that'd be really cool. So yeah. That's says you also need like, like PhD for that. Yeah, I mean, that could help because there's, especially now, there's a lot mm -hmm. of emphasis on sports science and, like, how much data and research can help improve um, athletic performance, improve, you know, injury prevention or injury recovery. So, yeah, that's, good. Yeah. Great. that's my interest right now. But okay. who knows how it will change. It would be interesting to see how it changes. Thank you, Kaya. You're welcome. <laughs> this is so sad. Is Kaya going to leave? I know. I'm really um, sad to leave. This has been a perfect yeah two years but but on to the next thing i usually go once or try to do like twice a year mm -hmm. visit like like west oh coast. Yeah. so Maybe. i'll see you on the west coast next interview yeah <laughs> like, so, like what's and the challenge <laughs> doing though yeah it's too. gonna probably i'll probably have a much different outlook right now i'm very yeah. excited okay i'm relaxed <laughs> like say bye but my subscriber bye see you next time <laughs> I'm gonna take a video today's like I'm kicking. <laughs> no you <laughs>